In this video, I'm going to introduce you to four exercises to alleviate or relieve some pinching or hip tension that you have in the front of your hip. Now, it's really important to understand where your hip is being pinched from or why it's there. Most of the time it's from excess sit sitting, it's from bad standing posture, or doing something too aggressive, hip thrusty in the front side. Now if that gets pinchy, we want to relieve it really quickly and bring ourselves back to a state of calm, peace, where everything feels organized. So in order to do that, we're going to use four exercises. The first exercise is going to be just a simple leg elevation on an elevated surface with some pillows. So we're going to need some pillows for that. The second thing you're going to need is some groundwork mat. This could be a yoga mat or just a nice rug, solid surface. Then we're going to be going into some mountain climbers and a single leg forward fold. Each of these exercises we're going to be doing for 90 seconds. 90 seconds just to introduce you to them, but each one of these exercises could be extrapolated and done for more time to get you a different result, maybe a little bit of a better result. But the challenge today is 10 minutes. Let's introduce you to four different positions where you can use to relieve and alleviate some of the pain and pinching that you have in the front of your hip. Let's get started with our elevated leg. Time is going to start now in three, two, and one. I'm going to take the same side leg. Today we're going to be talking about a right leg, a right leg. I'm just going to rest it on top of those pillows. And I've got the option to bend or extend my opposite leg. So I'm just going to elevate this. What elevating does is take the length demand of my hip flexors, so as all of that stuff, and just makes it a little bit shorter. From this position, your goal is to breathe into that deep lower right pocket and the lower right back side of your back. I'm going to be talking about right side today, but if you have left side, then breathe into your left side. Let's start that big inhale through our nose into our front right, back right hip pocket. Nice work, let's continue breathing. We have just over 30 seconds remaining. In this position, it's really important that we try and get our knee, foot, and ankle, and hip all in a very straight line. Last few cycles of breathing. Very nice. If this is something that you felt a lot of good work in, you can eventually remove one pillow or two pillows and do another block down here and then another block at your other surface until finally you're resting on the ground and you've regained the length that you need. But we're going to move on to our second exercise today. The second exercise is going to be our groundwork. I'm going to use this small surface that I have available and I'm going to use my groundwork to engage the back side of my body. I'm going to take that tension and I'm going to try and pull more tension to the back side so that my front side can relax and turn off. So join me in a hip over knee tall kneeling position. I really recommend your hands on the elevated surface. You can even use a yoga block to make this a bigger surface or your hands on the wall. The taller that you go, the less pinchy that you're going to feel in the front of your hips. So let's get set up anywhere in a good place that we feel comfortable. We're going to take our hips and we're going to shift them all the way to the right laterally. Then we're going to press them back. I should have all of my pressure, in my back outside right glute, nothing in the front space pressing my outside knee. Then I'm going to try and collect my hip back over my knee so that it's straight up and down. So I'm going to go from here all the way back. As I do that, I'm going to continue pushing that hip back. Once you find that hip push back, let's just pause in there and we're going to gain more engagement by pressing down through the knee, shin, and right outside ankle. I'm going to start our time. 90 seconds on the clock. Big inhale and exhale push. One thing that may help you, we're going to take our right hand, put it to the back of our right hip. I can tuck underneath 
or I can extend, I'm looking for more engagement and less activation in the front space. Make that small adjustment. Once you've made that adjustment, let's press, press, press our knee into the ground and slowly elevate our non-working side. Just hover that knee and foot just for a little bit. We're gonna press really big with our left hand. Right hand's gonna come to our chest. Continue breathing in through the nose, into the front, right, and back hip pocket. Make some space, open this thing up. Press it down, press it down. If it feels good, you can do little baby rocks, but let's make this pressure so big in this backside. Last 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and time. Nice work. We're gonna continue doing some groundwork, but now we're gonna try and take our hip and our stomach and connect these two. We want our hip to roll in, knee to roll in, in a side bend mountain climber. So it's like a traditional mountain climber, except I want your spine to really bend so you can feel a side crunch. Notice when I do a side crunch, it helps my thigh roll in. When the femur can roll in, it can pull to the backside away from the pinching in the hips. This is what we want. We wanna pull in and go away from the irritated area. So we're gonna do 90 seconds of mountain climbers. I'll give you a quick demo if you haven't seen those. I'm gonna pull my leg up. As I pull it up, I'm not gonna pull it out. We're not a dog and a fire hydrant. We're the opposite. We're doing almost a knee to the midline. As I do that, I'm gonna pull my same side shoulder down, pull my head over to the right. Same thing with the other side and the other. 90 seconds on the clock. Let's get started in three, two, one. Here we go. The more that you can kick your foot out as you come in to feel a big side bend, the better this is going to feel. If you want to pause at any time, even go to a knee down like crawl, super okay. Halfway done. I'm gonna take a little break. I got hot quick. Here we go. Mountain climbers. Boom. Boom. Moving for quality not for reps. I'm looking for this deep side bend, kick out the same side. Last 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. And five, four, three, two, and time. Whew, that got intense. Let's cool it down in a single side forward fold. We're gonna do a regular forward fold, but we're gonna try and bias ourselves to the side that's affected. And by biasing, we're gonna move away from that side. So let's find ourselves in a deep forward fold. If you need an elevated surface to put your hands on, go ahead and get that now. Today for this forward fold, I'm gonna get a little bit more juicy with it. I'm gonna take a yoga block and I'm gonna put it between my legs and squeeze so I can help my thighs roll in. Coming down to the forward fold. Because I'm going to my right side, I'm gonna find engagement in the back side of my legs. And then I'm gonna walk myself a little up and to the right. As I do that, my right femur is gonna roll in. Maybe my left one starts to roll out. This is very good. Time starts now. Three, 
the more that you can pull that same side hip back, feel the back side of your body, feel your glute, press your right hip into the ground, and then breathe into that lower right belly. Now that I've really properly stretched out my right side, I'm gonna kind of sway left and right, maybe go right back to the middle. Allow yourself to organize and kind of move in a way that feels really good. Always checking in, following those green lights, moving away, last 30 seconds. If you're feeling up for it, go ahead and elevate that non-working leg. In three, two, one, I'm gonna put all my weight in the working leg and I'm gonna slowly stand up from the hamstring and the glute. All right, let's talk about standing posture as we move on to our day. Let's try and integrate this into a good standing posture. We're gonna take shock signs, shock signs. I'm gonna go pinky in my low, or I'm sorry, my top hip bone, and then thumbs on my low ribs. And I'm gonna use this to see if my ribs are pulled to the right and my hips are shifted to the left. If I do that, it's really gonna crunch up and put some strain on one, one of my hips. So if I'm at all cattywampus, I'm gonna get my hips and my ribs nice and stacked over one another. And then I'm gonna use this as well to gauge whether my chest and my ribs are up or they're down. If I want to pull them down to bring some relief, that's okay. I'm going to pull them down, get some nice tension, and slowly posture myself up. If I want to pull it up, that's all right too, but we want to be in a place where we can breathe fully and feel pretty relaxed in the hips. Other than that, do some light work, take it easy on the hip, and uh, I hope you feel better. This is your 10-minute-ish four-exercise hip relief.